one of the most complex rearranging, if you want to take it like that, for the situation with microscopes is the thin lens equation. And if I jot that down again, it's uh, 1 over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v. Now, this is where you have to realize the u's and v's are sometimes easy to mistake. And so I make sure this is a v, a u, and an f. That's your focal length, object image, um, object distance, and image distance. So that's your equation. One way of rearranging it, if you, for example, know f and you know u and you're looking for v, would be stick in values in this part, in this part, this all then becomes more uh, similar. Some shuffle it around, invert the last bit, and uh, you're done, which I've done before already. However, it's also possible in some situations when I was talking about microscopes, it will help you to figure out some of the equations we've seen. It's sometimes best, and I favor it, to keep the general equation as it is without inserting values yet. And you can still treat it exactly like you did it before. So in this case, you've got um, the known here, another known here, so an unknown here, which is initially a sum. So you need to get rid of this part in the sum. So if we do that, we need to get rid of 1 over u. 1 over u we can remove if we subtract. Let me write that down properly. If we subtract 1 over u. And if we subtract 1 over u on both sides, what I'll be left with is on the left-hand side, 1 over f minus 1 over u. And on the right-hand side, 1 over u minus 1 over u disappears. So I can write it down just again so you can see it. That disappears. Plus 1 over v. That's all the right-hand side with that addition. So I've got 1 over f minus 1 over u equals 1 over v. Okay. So let me just write that out here in clear. 1 over v equals 1 over f minus 1 over u. Now, what we want to do is then find V. So in the other example, all I did is I had a value on the right-hand side. I flipped this around, and I just flipped that value around, inverted it, did the 1 over. Now, I could do this, but what do I do with this part? So initially, I could then just write it's going to be 1 over all of this. But uh, it becomes easier if this is actually a full proper fraction. So this is where I have to remind you on how do you work with fractions. So if you subtract one fraction from another, it's very easy if they've got um, a common value at the bottom of the fraction. In this case, they don't. So we need to mess around with these fractions to ensure they've got the same kind of denominator at the bottom. So I can ext extend both of these fractions. In this case, the common denominator would be f times u. So I want to have f times u on the left-hand side for that fraction. And on the right-hand side, that fraction should be f times u as well. Now, I've got the f. I don't have the u. So I need to put a u at the top and at the bottom. That's I've done. Remember, in fractions, you can happily cancel out things if they're at the top and the bottom. If I do that, what I'm left is with 1 over f, which is exactly what I've got here. So I've ensured this is the same as here. Minus 1 over u. I've got the u here. It's the f that I've got at the bottom, so I need to put it at the top cancel it, I would have 1 over u, and I would be where I was before. How does that help? Well, now I've got my common denominator, and I can bring that fraction together with the common denominator, and I just subtract the top two values. So that's how you would subtract a fraction. If you've got 1 over f minus 1 over u, that becomes u minus f over f times u. Why have I done that? So I've got the whole fraction on the right-hand side now. And if I now flip this side to become not 1 over v, but v, if I'm pedantic, I could write as v over 1. That's the flipped bit. But v over 1, if you have a value in divide, um, and if you have a value and divide it by 1, it's the same. So that's why I normally drop that. That's the whole idea. While you flip this, then you've got the V only. If I have this fraction now, I can flip both sides, and I'll end up with F times U over U minus F. And that's the full algebraic expression for 
v and now I can decide to plug in values or in some cases I might use that equation to put into another situation of uh, combined lenses to figure out further information that I need but it's perfectly fine and you can compare that if you're using um, the focal length of five centimeters and the object distance of 10 centimeters like in the example before you'll see if you stick this in you'll get the same value coming out um, for v as we had in the other example.